What's up, what's good? It's your girl Jasmine back when I be on the channel. Yes, ma'am. Yes, sir. Okay. Hey, if you are new to this channel, I appreciate you clicking on this video. I hope you guys will enjoy this video and check out all my other videos. If you are a consistent supporter, you got a special place in my heart because I appreciate you. I rock with you. Thank you for rocking with me. And we're going all the way up together type thing. Okay. So, y'all know I love me some basketball. Allen Iverson is one of my top point guards. One of my favorite point guards to ever play the game. So, of course, we got to do a video on why the NBA hated Allen Iverson. Do y'all really feel like the NBA hated him? Or do you think it was something else? Or do you think that's, like, too deep or too much of a stretch to say? But let's go ahead and get into this video see how it is. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, and push that notification bell so you know case when I post. And make sure y'all in that comment section talking to me down below. With that being said, AI, let's go. When Iverson came to the NBA, he already had a bad rep. At the age of 17, he was wrongly accused of injuring a woman in a bowling alley fight, even though nobody with common sense could realize that a five-star athlete wouldn't hit a random woman with a chair. Iverson got singled out because he was famous and got sentenced to five years in prison, of which he served four months due to a lack of evidence. Before the bowling alley incident, Allen could choose where he wanted to go to college, but after it, the scholarships vanished like donuts in front of Charles Barkley. But after a Nah, why they be doing Charles like <laughs> Nah, but that, just to touch on that, um, situation it's not laughing matter because I feel like a lot of men and a lot of women get falsely accused of things and he just was blessed enough to come out of this situation um, you know to be able to come out of this situation and also that goes back to your surroundings be careful who you around because you never know who somebody's really after you and jealous of you and want to do that to you, you know what I'm saying but let's go he letter from his mother Georgetown's coach John Thompson offered him a scholarship Iverson became one of the best players in Hoya's history after which the 76ers selected him first overall in the 1996 NBA draft. The 90s ISO-heavy style of basketball suited Allen Iverson, like tight jeans suit JLo's posterior perfectly. <laughs> AI was spectacular from the start. Ooh, he points as a rookie, but he shook Jordan's score on him. The NBA had gotten its next big star with a great game and the swagger to match it. And while the rest of the 90s players wanted Look to imitate suits. Jordan and his Wall Street suits, Iverson wanted to imitate rappers. The 90s were the bling bling era in hip hop, and Iverson was the middleman between rap and the NBA. And because of his success on the court, swaggy clothes and non-conformist interviews, Iverson became a trendsetter. After Jordan retired in 1998, NBA players rejected the suits and traded them for cornrows, baggy jeans, saggy sweatpants. But you know what's crazy? How literally the eras be changing, like each era, there's literally something different going on. Like when you think about it now in this time frame, in this era, this decade, whatever you want to call it, and you look back to that era, it's like, dang, we people was really wearing baggy clothes. They could fit a medium. They over here wearing a 3X just because that's what was popping. Like, ain't that crazy? Like, we used to really be dressing wow. And the Steve Harvey suits, if you don't know who Steve Harvey's suits is, when he first came out, he wore, like, the baggy suits, you know? And then it's crazy now because now everybody wear tailored everything, you know what I'm saying? Fittable, sizable, whatever you want to call it. Ain't that crazy, like how fashion Throwback has changed? football jerseys, jewelry, do-rags, and hats. And there was no question who they got it from. It was a direct copy from Iverson. His appearance, That's his dope. persona, and his game went together perfectly. And AI became a style and cultural icon. And even though the youth and his peers loved it, Commissioner David Stern and the top NBA executives hated it. Despite making a lot of money off Iverson, whose superstardom filled up every arena. They hated that the league was now associated with rap, guns, jewelry, weed, and alcohol. St Is that what that means? Because he dressed a certain way? Is that what the, that's what you think that it was related to? Mm, not necessarily. I mean, I just feel like that was just a controlling standpoint because at the end of the day, they're doing their job, correct? Y'all agree or disagree? Does that really make a difference? You know, I feel like a person should be comfortable to wear whatever they want to work. Because at the end of the day, they're not wearing that on the court. Their job is what they do on the court, not what they wear, right? Or I could be wrong. We could may agree to disagree. But then again, nowadays, back then, social media wasn't that big. But nowadays, they do the whole, you know, the, not the walkthrough, but what's it called? When they get, like, people's outfits, they're walking through the tunnel and stuff. Like, of course, like, nowadays, it's totally different. But, like... I don't know. Hopefully that makes sense, but I ain't trying to step on no toes. Stern threatening to ban him from the NBA. 
because of the way he looked, talked, and acted, and because he hung out with guys with criminal records, and because he was in jail himself, Allen Iverson became the most interesting and polarizing NBA player who constantly filled the newspaper pages. When Iverson recorded a gangster rap album in 2000, under the nickname Jules, releasing the lead Not single Jules. 40 Bars, it received enormous backlash, even though other NBA players have done the same thing. That's why I was about to say, sure. I say Shaq was a whole rapper, DJ, you know, it's just given a more controlling aspect. But uh, go off, come on. It wasn't a particularly great song, and it was filled with profanity and homophobic lyrics. Then again, so uh. were all the other gangster rap albums of that era. David Stern was furious, and he said that Iverson embarrassed himself, his team, and the entire NBA. Oh. He threatened to ban Iverson from playing if the album was ever released for mass consumption. Iverson's defense was simple. He said that if you don't want to listen to it, simply don't buy the album. Right. Not fully realizing the magnitude of his superstardom, and the effect these lyrics might have. But eventually, AI caved in, and the album never saw the light of day. Next season, Iverson played the best basketball of his career, won the regular season MVP, and pushed the mediocre Sixers team to the 2001 hey, NBA Finals. I had them shoes. Constant media backlash, and the practice range. In 2002, Iverson led the NBA in scoring and steals for the second straight year and was Lou. voted to the first All-NBA team. Boy, y'all remember when uh, Iverson stepped over Lou? Boy, that was the most embarrassing thing I've ever seen in my life. Because what? How you let somebody step over you like it after making a shot on you? And like, what? But even though he produced on the court, the media wouldn't let him off the hook. After he got into a public argument with his wife, somebody made up a story that he threw her out of the house naked. Even oh. though there was no evidence and the story wasn't true, seemingly every media outlet ran with that story, portraying Iverson as a thug and a bully once again. Reporters were camping outside of Iverson's home for days, hoping to get a hot take and sell the narrative. A negative story about Allen was going to sell regardless of who told it, their credibility, and if it was true. That's mm -hmm. how big of a star he was, and the media used and manipulated that. On May 7th, 2002, Iverson and this is one of the reasons why I could not be a celebrity, because why are you investing so much time in my life when at the end of the day, you're going to make up what you want to make up to attract them views to your to your network or whatever the case may be? You know what I'm saying? It's like, I feel like he was really picked on, you know, just for being him. And it's like, uh, I applaud him for never changing, you know, like, because a lot of people would have cracked and be like, all right, so what you want me to do? I'll do what you want me to do so I can play the game I love type thing, you know? And, like, to see, like, that and to hear, like, he never changed and he kept doing him, that's respect, man. You can't do nothing but respect that because so many people fold because they're being controlled, you know? He was doing a press conference after Philadelphia's first-round playoff exit, which came at the same time as the death of Iverson's best friend, and Allen was in the worst of moods. And then the media started asking him about missing practice, which became one of the most famous sound bites in NBA history. Talking about just practice. Lost in the playoffs. My best friend practice. died a few days ago, and you were here asking me about practice. We are in here and we're talking about practice. Iverson's reaction was completely normal regarding the circumstances. Right. Mentioning practice that at the time made no sense at all. Yeah, Iverson wasn't always attending morning shoot-arounds, and he was perpetually late, but the dude just won the MVP a year ago, led the league in scoring twice, and had just averaged 30 points in that first round loss. But the media kept provoking him, trying to bait him into speaking his mind and saying something that would sell newspapers. If some other NBA player talked about his friend dying and not wanting to talk about practice, reporters would have likely behaved differently. However, because it was Allen Iverson, they made it look like Iverson never practiced in his life. Right. And that whole news conference became legendary because AI said the word practice 24 times. When Kobe asked for Shaq to be traded, and when he later criticized his teammates and shot the ball 35 times a night, the media would often- No freaking way, bro. The whole team was just on him. Are y'all, are we not gonna talk about that? Let me see, let me show y'all. Cause bro, look, it's the most replayed thing too. That's crazy, hold on. Look at this, you got one, two, three, four. You got the whole team on you and you got like what? One second left? That is wow. Shot the ball 35 times a night. That's wow. The media would often write that he didn't have any help. Iverson shot a lot. They called him a selfish ball hog. The dress code. Let's I talk about it. I just Let's talk about it. Later. You spoke to him yourself. 
After 2004 and the infamous malice at the palace, the NBA's reputation was at an all-time low. During David Stern's reign as- Yo, did y'all watch that brawl? Like, was y'all, did y'all watch it live? Or did y'all see like highlights and clips? Or did y'all even watch the documentary for that? I would love to hear y'all response. Cause like, what was y'all's thoughts on that? Was y'all thinking how the NBA was thinking? Or was y'all like, or was y'all kind of like more on the player side to where it was like, enough is enough? Or was you on the fan? Like, I would just love to hear y'all opinion about that whole situation. Cause that was very Mission. interesting. The how league it was all losing money down. and Stern was pissed like never before. He wanted to clean up the image of the NBA and make the game more attractive for fans. And more importantly, for corporate sponsors. Stern made plenty of changes to get rid of the thuggish image that permeated the NBA. And the main thing- But why is it gotta be called that though? You know what I'm saying? Why you gotta call it thuggish? sleeveless shirts, shorts, hats, football jerseys, do rags, jewelry, and Timberland boots, and instituted that the players came to the arena dressed like bankers and not like rappers. Even though nobody from the NBA confirmed this, the dress code was the direct attack on Allen Iverson, who was the pioneer of hip hop in the NBA, hated by the referees. Apart from Stern, NBA owners and executives, Iverson wasn't particularly liked by the refs either. After he- Y'all think refs be getting paid to do some of the things that they do to players? I do. I do. I think, you know, the higher ups, big big boys, big money, talking about the billionaires, you know, saying like, hey, we need this team to lose or we need this player to foul out for this, this, and this reason. I I wouldn't put it past them. I would put it past them doing that. But not every game, but like certain games, you know what I'm saying? Especially like playoff times or whatever the case may be, what I would not put it past them. Like what y'all think? publicly criticized referee Steve Javi. He got fined $25,000, but the refs were angry because they felt he needed to be suspended. So they decided to get revenge. See According what I'm saying? To Tim Donahue, the NBA referee who ended up in prison for betting on NBA games. We felt See what I'm saying? he should have been suspended. And because he wasn't, we felt like we would teach him a lesson, Donahue said. Donahue also- And that's messed up. It's the fact that he was bold enough to say that is crazy to me, but that's messed up though. Like, dang, like, he lost 25K, which is a lot of money, you know, to somebody who don't have that as much money, you know. But, dang, like, chill. So said that he would bet against Iverson and his teams after he heard which refs were assigned to Iverson's games. Because he knew that if a referee disliked Iverson, that he would not get any calls in his favor. See what I'm saying? That's messed lose. up, bro. Premature departure uh, from the NBA. CP3, CP3, I feel like a lot of players had this problem. I know Chris Paul, he spoke out about a problem like this before. He said every time he had a certain ref, like he's like, nothing goes his way at all. Like every time. And it was like some other players said the same thing. That's That's sad. Yeah. You shouldn't get that deep. In 2005, the Sixers traded Iverson to Denver Woo! after several early playoff exits. With the Nuggets, Iverson actually played some of the most efficient basketball of his career. Man. But they decided not to extend his contract after two seasons and traded him to Detroit. And that's when it all started to go downhill for Iverson. With the Pistons, Iverson got relegated to the bench, despite averaging a solid 18 points per game at the age of 33 and making an all-star team. The media did their thing, and they blamed Iverson for the Pistons not making the playoffs, despite what? AI playing only half the season for the team. He got chastised. He was called selfish and a bad teammate. And as a result, no team wanted to sign him in the offseason. That's other crazy. Other than the lowly Memphis Grizzlies, who were bound for the lottery. After only three games with Memphis, Iverson asked for a leave of absence, after which the Grizzlies waived him. AI was 34 at the time. He wasn't as quick as he once was, but he was still good enough to play in the NBA. After he got waived, no team wanted to sign okay, him. Really Even though good. a 38-year-old Shaq and Tracy McGrady <laughs> with busted knees got an NBA contract despite being far less productive than AI at that time. And then, after several months where Iverson thought he was retired, the Philadelphia 76ers called him to come home. Iverson returned to Philly, where he was greeted- Yo, so quick question. Which team do you think, um, I guess like which team that Iverson on was you a fan of Iverson or was you always a fan of Iverson? I know some people never heard of Iverson until he went to the Nuggets, you know, like the little youngins, the little youngins don't know about the Sixers Iverson, you know what I'm saying? But, um, you know, I gotta go with the Sixers Iverson. Got to, got to. He, he took that team further than what a lot of people expected. Cause who do he have on there? He had, uh, McGee. Or McKee, whatever his name was. What's the ball-headed guy's name was? I think his name was like Eric Brown or 
Aaron Brown. I mean, they had a decent lineup, you know what I'm saying? So, um, and you got to think back then, they didn't really have, like, superstar teams. It's like you had that one or two superstars on the team, and that's what you had, and that's what you did. So, I feel like that Sixers team was – they did their thing when they really wanted to. I, I feel like I'm missing some people. I low-key want to look it up, but for sure. And, of course, when he went to Denver, um, that was straight. That was that was good basketball as well. Um, I didn't really keep up with him at Memphis. Like I said, he only played three games. But um, I feel like Aberson's career should have been – way higher or maybe I don't know the word I'm trying to use but it should have been just better like I felt like he always got picked on for something you know what I'm saying he did like a king and he played solid with 14 points on average however on March 2nd 2010 Iverson asked to be removed from the team due to the serious illness of his daughter and wanting to spend time with his family in tough times after that AI never played another minute in the NBA again he was only 34 years old, and he could have definitely helped a contender, but nobody wanted anything to do with Iverson, largely because of false media narratives. It was extremely similar to the Carmelo Anthony situation in 2018. After Houston had waived him, Melo was unable to find a team and was out of the NBA for a year until Portland- Why do y'all think that happens? Like, like it just, that's what I'm saying. You really be having to live in a moment when you in your dreams, because you don't know when that is taken away from you. Because it's like, like Carmelo Anthony, like great shooters, superstar level. You know what I'm saying? It's like, what happened? Allen Iverson. It's like, dang, like you really gave up on him. But then again, I don't know. I guess teams be picking and choosing what they want to deal with. It's crazy. When gave him a shot and where he was immediately able to prove his worth, averaging 15 points per game, one of the best marks in the league for an older player. Legacy, being real to a fault. Iverson was frustrated with the NBA, and he didn't want to say stuff just because some PR guy told him to. Right. In 2009, he was asked about the NBA CARES program, and without hesitation, he simply said that it's fake, oh. and he prefers to help others when the cameras aren't around. Due to his realness and nonconformity, his fans adored him even more for saying things like that, and the NBA's so. top executives hated him even Iverson was extremely polarizing, and there was no in-between. People who loved him, they thought he was a six-foot David who dominated the game of Goliaths, unapologetically driving to the basket time and time again. Ooh. How many times big guys have hit him and laid his skinny ass down? Those who <laughs> hated him called him a ball hawk who played selfish hey, and inefficient love basketball shoes. and didn't care or respect his coach Bro, and his teammates. In a way, everybody most... wanted to wear the headband the ai headbands the little the little finger band uh the reebok shoes which he better talk about in his video because that was a big deal um i feel like everybody wanted to be like ai bro and it's like and then you try to change them you don't respect them it's just crazy like you can't control everybody like everybody is not controllable Groups were right due to his insane speed and <laughs> handles. Iverson could embarrass opponents like Ooh. very few other people. And almost every game, he produced something for the highlight reel, even though he was 160 pounds soaking wet. But this was the guy who never lifted weights, wasn't getting up before noon. If the team scheduled a morning shoot around, Iverson was usually not there. He oh. was operating on Allen time. And if this didn't suit you, well, that's your problem. If you Dang. had to shoot a commercial. That's different, though. That's a little disrespectful to the to not only just the organization, but to your teammates. You know what I'm saying? We here shooting around. We here at practice. We here, you know, on the times we're supposed to be here. And you showing up when you want to show up. That Now, that that's a little too far. I'm not going to hold you with that. That's a little too far. And that, that could be some of the reasons why other teams didn't want to deal with that. Because, like, you know, we ain't trying to bring that here. You know, we need you to be on time. So I do understand that part. That's unprofessional. The director wasn't in charge of the working hours. Iverson was. If he wanted to leave off the set, Allen would just do it. And he didn't really give a damn about anybody else. However, that all fades away when you know that Iverson played the 2001 season with 24 different injuries. Dang. And ultimately led 24? the NBA in scoring and won the MVP award. Do you think that the Rolling Stones came to meetings on time and were darlings to deal with? No, of course they weren't. But they are still arguably the most popular band in history. And just like with the Stones, you have to let some things slide with Iverson. Because everyone knew when they got on that stage, you could always count on them giving 110%. If you just looked at the box score, 
would not be impressed due to the amount of shots Iverson took. But if you watched him play, you'd be amazed every time. Facts, that's something facts. no statistic can describe. And if you compare his unapologetic no BS comments with the PR polished news conferences of today, you realize that Iverson is a relic of the past and understand why he is still more popular than half of the current NBA players. All right, y'all. So he did not talk about the Reebok thing, which is kind of disappointment because I think stuff like that is good facts. And I'm going to give y'all a fact that I know about Iverson that is very true. I, do, I love basketball, y'all. So I like doing research and stuff on, like, certain things. So Allen Iverson, if y'all don't know, he's literally sponsored by Reebok, been sponsored his, basically his whole lifetime, right? So uh, what it says is when Iverson got offered uh, – a large sum from Reebok when he first got not first got drafted but like in 2000 he they was just gonna give him a lump sum or they said that you can break your contract up and get paid over a lifetime and accept 800,000 every year until 2030 and then we'll just pay you out total I, of course Iverson was like all right cool bet S smart man because smart thing especially in 2001 because 2001 he probably was thinking like like he probably was young. I'm not for sure his age in 2001, but he probably was young. And, you know, if somebody's trying to pay you $16 million off rip just to sign rather than breaking down your contract to 800000 a year, most young players are like, oh, just give me that $16 million. okay? But thinking about lifetime, thinking about future generations, uh, you know, generational wealth, that was the smartest thing he could have done. And I feel like that's a positive that a uh, dude could have shared in his video. So he been, since 2001, Allen Iverson received 800K every year just from Reebok alone. Just from Reebok alone, you feel me? So ain't no telling how many other endorsements and deals that he has. And that's something, sometimes people, uh, athletes got to think, like you can still make revenue outside of your sport and like people make more money outside of their sport than within their sport you know but um yeah that's all i gotta say on that and his shoes were a beast people still today still want to hoop in his shoes so that's dope and it's dope that uh reebok allowed him you know set that contract up for him to get that broken down each year and then like in 2030 i think he's they're gonna like write him a check for like 40 million something like that which is crazy, but I don't know. Y'all can do your own research about it. But I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Comment down below what y'all think of Allen Iverson. If y'all think this video is pretty accurate or inaccurate. Um, do you really think the NBA hated Allen Iverson? What y'all think of Allen Iverson? Is he one of y'all top point guards? Um, let me know. Talk to me down below. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, and let me know any other videos you'd like to see me do. With that being said, see you guys next video.